Okay. Hello. So, here my thought process is that Golden Finale is kind of just unexciting. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. If I wanted a, a boring game with a final augment being gold, I would take Golden Finale. Champion Duplicator has a chance to high roll, which means it's out of my control more or less. Radiant Blessing is a bit equal for the entire lobby. You can kind of play around it, maybe lose streak early, or you know, just win streak and then late game you get a power spike when you drop below 40, for example. All of these things make sense. So for me, in this position, I think I prefer Radiant Blessing. It feels like the one that has the most skill expression, while also being more or less fair for the entire lobby. I do think Golden Finale is a little bit better in terms of RNG. You don't have to worry as much about low rolling. But yeah, it's a bit boring. Here I hold the Frost units since I drop a Zillion. I also think maybe I can go Jax reroll, Jax Ash reroll, multi strikers. Rock is very unexciting. Blitzcrank doesn't have any pairs. Um, and then, yeah, I mean. So I'm not super interested in this shop. And then here I drop this, a Syndra. So my thought immediately is, oh, maybe I can play Syndra reroll. It's like, but I look at my items, I'm like, oh, this is an Evan Trout, most likely, right? Uh, it could be Bloodthirster, Sterix Gage, Nashers, Morello, lots of items here, right? I need to see my third component before I make any big decisions. I just need to think about what I could play. And here I look at the entire shop and I think, well, Seraphine Siroc is not something I want to play here. Uh, Blitzcrank Jace I don't have pairs for. So, and I have an Evan Trout, so it's... Like on my bench as, a, as we speak, right? But then here I drop Cassiopeia and a bow. And uh, I immediately think, oh, okay, interesting. And then I see Hunting Frenzy. I could have taken this, but I just didn't want to reroll Hunt the Hunters. I don't think it's very strong right now after the Wukong nerf. And then my thought immediately thinks, oh, I can play Shapeshifters, Syndra, Cassiopeia. Because I have a Nashus Tooth, for one. For two, if you saw my augments, if you noticed, I have two augments that give items. Transfiguration, I'm not interested in, because I would be re-rolling for the two units. Caretaker's Favor, however, is really good for this. Because for Syndra Cassiopeia, one of the big issues with this comp, with Syndra Cassiopeia and Shapeshifters, is that you need a lot of specific items. You need two bows, at least. Two bows for two Rage Blades on Cassiopeia. You like to have a gun blade as well, right? So that's three rods, two bows. And then if you take Sinja into account, you also need, well, if you're going Nasher's Tooth, which I think is a fine item on her, then you need another bow. That's three bows already. And I think for this in particular, for Syndra with Shapeshifters, I think you should always go Archangel Staff. If you're not going Archangel Staff, it is horrendous the damage output is just way too low you need that ramping damage to play off of so that means you need another rod that's at least three rods and three bows so the only reason i decided to play this well there's multiple but the only reason i actually took this is because of the augment that gives me four component anvils which makes it a lot more playable and here i reforged this this cloak i'm not actually sure why i did that to be honest um, that's a little weird for me. Normally, I think I was a bit sleepy during this game as well, to be honest. I remember being pretty tired, so that was a little weird. I don't think there's any reason to reforge the cloak there. There will be some micro mistakes. Not a lot of macro mistakes, but definitely micro mistakes. Like, for example, even when I was choosing the augment, I didn't scout beforehand to see if anyone was going to play Shapeshifters or Cassiopeia Syndrome. And here, I'm just... At this point, I'm just locked in into the comp. I have two casses. I have my Nasher's Tooth. I'm pretty much locked in. I should definitely be doing a scout here. Generally, I would be scouting in any free time I have. If I don't need to think, I'll scout. So right now, generally, like normally, I would be scouting. Um, I do think I was really tired if I wasn't even scouting during this, this game. 
Another reason I was not really scouting though is because I know this comp is kind of dead. No one really plays this. Because it's so difficult to play. Cassiopeia, Syndra items are really hard to get. And Syndra got a huge nerf, right? A few weeks back. Since then, pretty much no one is interested in playing her. It's very difficult to stack. Like, if you don't have an item, a Shoujin Adaptive Helm, or something on 2-1, then it's usually just barely a top 4 or a bot 4, straight up. But I had the Nashviz, I had two casts at this point, I had to augment for it, so it just appealed to me. And I knew I would most likely be uncontested as well. So it was by far the most appealing comp for me to go here. And then here I take a tier, of course, because I want to get a Shoujin on my girl as quickly as possible. But if you saw I was clicking the Wukong, it was because I thought in hindsight maybe I should have just taken the bow. Even though I really want Shoujin on my Syndra, maybe I should have just taken the bow. Because I still need two Rage Blades, and I could even go red buff on my Syndra as well. But I do think the tier is perfectly fine in this case. I don't think there's anything wrong with taking a tier here. Because I'm going to get 4 anvils later on in the game. So I have plenty of time to get the bows. Here I'm just thinking about what's the thing that could save me the most health. Witchcraft, of course, plus Bastion. So I just go ahead and play Poppy Lilia. And then I'm pretty sure I end up selling these Jaxes on my bench. Yeah. In this case, I probably should have held Nila for a little bit longer, because she doesn't cost me interest, of course, and she could be Eldritch, which might be a little stronger. So like I said, there's going to be quite a few micro mistakes. It's just because I was unfocused, a little tired at the time. And of course I did hold the Jace because he is a shapeshifter. Uh, you generally won't play Jace unless you get an emblem and then you can play H shapeshifter or until you get Briar, which is much later, right? So he's kind of just a placeholder for Briar later in the game. Oh yeah, and I didn't mention, but I am trying to lose streak early game. That's why, you know, I'm not really worried about how strong my board is. You do see I have item slammed, but it's pretty much just the Nashers, which is kind of... Mm, has like, irrelevant impact during fights. The only thing it does is let my Syndra stack faster, which is all I care about. Stacking Syndra early game and maintaining my lost streak. So I just try to play a slightly tanky frontline. And then, you know, I play Cass for Encanter because I do want to try to get some kills if possible. Hmm, why so tense? Relax. Here, I actually think maybe I should have leveled. Do I not level? I don't think I level here. Because I'm not sure that I win this fight against Krugs. But um, since you can stack against Krugs... And I think I have a little bit of faith in the shapeshifters, because they do have a lot of base HP when they ult. These are just gold, of course, I'm not pivoting. I'm kind of locked in at this point. Two Kazes, two Syndras at level 4 is pretty nice. Like, I have, I have every single uh, unit paired at this point, right? Two of everything. Here I think I level to look for my uh, component anvil. And then I get Shoujin, which is exactly what I wanted, of course. Here I'm thinking about the item. It's never Hodge, right? I'm thinking Steadfast Heart or Steadfast Heart or Protector's Vow. And I do end up going with Steadfast Heart because I think the tier can be used for Archangels, which is, in my opinion, again, a must have on Syndra if you're playing this comp. Otherwise, her damage is just way too low. I've had Syndra with a hundred and... I think... I don't remember if it was 150 stacks, but it was a lot. And her damage was just 
so low. Her, her damage output was not good. I think I had um, Shoujin, Shoujin, Nashers. So maybe it would have been okay with a Death Cap or Morello, Red Buff. But I do think Archangels is the best. And here I'm okay with winning. That's why I played the Mordekaiser, Eldritch. Because I think to myself, it's perfectly fine if I lose. And if I take a very small loss, that's beautiful, right? And if I get a win, it's, it is also great. Here I end up taking the Artifact. Because I just think it has the high, highest potential to... Well, just the highest potential, right? To help me get a top four. And here I'm just thinking really hard. Can anyone use Silvermere Dawn? That was my first thought. Because this I think Silvermere Dawn is extremely strong. Light Shield Crest, really bad. It's in a void. Uh, and then I was at the end there thinking between Trench Coat and Gambler's Blade. Which one would be better? I was thinking, oh, I could go Gambler's Blade for Cassiopeia. But I felt like that was just not high enough cap for my board. So, because it is, I think, just worse than taking a, a trench coat with shapeshifters because in my mind I'm thinking okay I'm gonna take a trench coat I can put this on Nasus I'm gonna have three Nasuses when they ult they're gonna have a ton of HP it gives me insane frontline and they also do a lot of damage so I think okay trench coat highest cap and it's also probably the strongest combat right now because it just gives me three units it's basically like getting an extra three units just straight up Especially when you're playing shapeshifters, because when the little ones ult, they gain extra XP. Or sorry, HP. <laughs> extra HP. Nico back in her Nico scan. And here I do end up selling the Jace, because I feel like my two removers are worth more than the Jace, in this case. Also... When I took the trench coat, I was thinking I could put it on Nasus, right? Alongside the uh, Steadfast Heart. And I was... I'm pretty much aiming in my mind to go for Protector's Vow. Because I think that pretty much confirms the trench coat clones surviving until they ult. And it also makes them ult faster, right? It makes them ult faster, gives them a shield to make sure they don't die too quickly. Because when they split, they do have less HP. But the thing is, when shapeshifters ult, they gain a lot of HP. It gets multiplied, right? So I think it's a, just a really good combo that these three items. Steadfast Heart gives the durability for the little clones. And then the Protector's Out gives the mana to ult faster and also keeps them from dying. So they just can't get one shot, basically. And then here you'll notice, I'm thinking about taking the Syndra, but Sword is not something I want. And I was really tempted to take the Chain Vest in this case, but I changed my mind because I believe that getting the Rage Blade on my Cassiopeia ASAP is more important because I still want four rods optimally, right? Double Rage Blade, Gun Blade on the Cass, and then an Archangels on the Syndra. And this is just a lot of items I'm going to need, right? So I don't want to use my anvils, in this case, this anvil, to pick bow. I want to take rods, just like I did here. So it worked out perfectly. This also could have been a cloak, right? Something. Here I start rolling because I want to get the Syndra. And then I immediately stop because I got the Syndra. <laughs> so I have two star Syndra. I feel strong enough. And then I continue to roll. I am going to keep 50 gold, I believe. Oh, okay. So I, I over rolled. I shouldn't have rolled there. I got lucky. I hit Nasus and I got double Shivana. So then I just roll again because I'm already below 50 from the mistake. So like I said, there's going to be a lot of micro mistakes. I should have just stayed above 50 gold and slow rolled for Syndra, Cassiopeia. There was no need to roll under 50 here. So it's like minus one gold. Kind of didn't get punished though, right? Because I ended up getting a Nasus. I believe I do use a remover here because I don't want to sell Nico. Yeah. So I'm willing to sell the Jace because I know he's getting replaced by a better unit uh, later. So I don't need to hold, you know, two Jaces, three Jaces, whatever. So I just end up selling him earlier. But then this time I don't want to take 
or I don't want to sell my Nico because it's going to be a little difficult to get Nico two star when I'm slow rolling at level six. In my next unit in would be Shivana or maybe just an Eldritch unit temporarily. And you can see my rolls are going pretty well, right? I have five Cassiopeias, three Syndras. She's stacking well. I have really good items on my back line already and my front line, to be honest. And if you notice the Nasus, when he splits, right? He splits, he ults, he gets the HP from Shapeshifter, and he steals HP from the units nearby. So I'm really looking for Protector's Vow now. This is like the item I want the most immediately because it'll help maintain my win streak. So I'm pretty much just hoping for a chain vest and maybe a rod off of the wolves here. I think I just am like brain lagging <laughs> while playing this game. I'm just like sitting here, not even thinking, just staring at the screen. I'll start moving soon. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I get a cast. It's very lucky, right? Nice. Don't need any of these three stars. I get Archangels. I slam that immediately. I'm sure I do. Yeah, this is, I think, personally, this is my favorite Cinder build. I do think Nashers can be red buff, but that is just very unreasonable. You would need four bows between Cassiopeia and Syndra if you went red buff. It's just incredibly difficult to get all those bows. So I think Nashers, you know, and I had Nashers on 2 1, so obviously I was going to slam it. I don't want to be greedy with items if I don't have to. The rolling is going pretty well with the Cassis. I am low rolling Syndra a little bit, but I think it's pretty balanced as of right now. And I got two Nasuses, which is already really nice. So you see the Nasus health bar. Look when he ults, right? He ulted, one of them ulted, two ulted. It basically doubles their health or triples their health or something. It's a bit ridiculous, but I will say, I think trench coat, uh, there's obviously some really good units to put it on. But I think Shapeshifter Nasus tank is probably one of the best and most attainable things you could put it on. Just trench coat plus, you know, trench coat plus protectors valve plus any tank items probably going to be pretty good. I do like the steadfast chart though for the durability. Here I was considering inspiring epitaph versus martyr, but I just think to myself, Dragon attack speed does nothing here. I'd rather just have the heal on my entire team, right? So late game, if I'm playing six shapeshifters and I have three coming out of the trench coat, well, the second one unit dies, if it heals at least, let's say the other five shapeshifters, there's six shapeshifters, one dies, it heals the other five for 9% of their total health. That is just massive. That's 45% healing. And that's like kind of minimum, right? It can be better than that. If the trench coat pops, there's three little ones. Uh, the back line is getting healed so they don't die to random poke damage. Right, from rise uh, could be rise it could be some something else like ziggs hitting my back line and a lot of these fights are going to look like i'm losing until you see the nasa split and then you realize that it's just not even that close actually the second all the nasa's ult i basically have three extra tanks on the field which is just Incredibly strong. I high roll Nasus 2 at level 6. This is definitely a high roll, I will say. I'm, I'm not going to pretend like it's not. And then here, um, if you notice, I rolled at 54 gold down to 52. Because I was thinking to myself, or I think it was 50, I rolled from 53 to 51 gold. Because I think, oh, I have 8 Cassiopeias I want to hit immediately, right? I'm not worried about hitting the Syndra right now. But getting that cast 3 right now with the Nasus 2 is a massive power spike. And to me, that is worth it. Because we just passed stage 4, 2. Which means a lot of people just got a big power spike, right? They got their augments, they rolled down. So I really want to roll below 50 here to make myself stronger. But I already got Nasus and I got cast. So there's nothing left to roll for at this point, right? So I'm just holding my 50 interest and hoping it's enough to maintain the win streak. Also, I'm not sure what next item I go for, but it should always be Chain Vest. Assuming there's no Briar on the carousel that I can get. Uh, if there is, I'm not getting it. I'm last pick. Anyways, no one's going to give me Briar. 
there's no briar to begin with here uh, so I'm just staring at this chain vest I see it's on a two cost Ari most likely no one wants it so see I'm clicking to show you guys actually I click Ari then I click Gwen because I'm thinking this is the order I want right chain vest now big power spike or bow for potentially rage blade and I take the chain vest because I think the chain vest power spike now is much more important than holding out for this bow and I also have two uh, no sorry not two anvils I have three anvils left level seven level eight I get an anvil from my augment and I'm also getting an anvil from the chickens so I'm not really worried about getting that last bow right also I'm just I'm finally scouting as you can see so normally when I'm not tired I'm actually playing focused I will scout pretty much every single round to check for information that I need And I finally got my Protector's Vow. Uh, I tried to reposition because I wanted to fix the left side of my units. I think Swain should be centered. Nico should be beside Swain on the left. And then the, the other units can go on the left. Uh, Nasus wants to be on the loan on the right side, right? Because I want him to get popped. I want the trench coat to pop early. I want him, all the little ones, to be alive. And then the shapeshifters on the left to tank. This way, they all have a chance to ult like early in the fight the nasus right so as you can see here that's exactly what happened i have five tanks alive still and this way nasus he gets popped like boom really quickly and then the other shapeshifters if they take aggro and die then martyr can heal the little ones so basically just ensures nasus gets popped early and then the clones ult as quickly as possible here i'm just rolling for syndra i'm kind of low rolling i didn't get a syndra for a lot of rolls here but I do finally find one and then I stop at 50 gold if I had hit another singer there I probably would have been uh, incentivized to continue rolling under 50 but since I'm still three off I do not want to roll the chance is a little too low for me right now especially since um yeah three Syndras. if I didn't hit one by 40 gold I would feel it would feel really bad basically so I just Hope that I'm strong enough to win this fight. Once again, I should have been scouting, trying to position correctly. But uh, I do think my positioning is generically good. I have my two carries behind Nasus, right? So all the damage is focused on the right side. And then I just have my tanks in a sort of nice order on the left. I haven't fixed the Swain uh, Nico Elise yet. I do like to have um, Nico between two units because she heals teammates and then Swain centered because he has the two hex radius on his ult here I roll a little deep because I know I'm dropping gold off of the chickens and I get a rod so this is pretty much always rage blade but in this case, I instantly popped the anvil. I could have waited, but I just wanted the power spike now. So I went ahead and took it. And here I actually take the champ dupe, 10 gold champ dupe, uh, for Syndra. So I hit, boom, 3 star Syndra. It is quite expensive, but I think getting 3 star Syndra is worth it. 10 gold is 5 rerolls, <laughs> right? So I maybe could have natural it, but I I always think I'd rather just take the, the for sure final Syndra rather than have to roll for it and then I instantly level and play my fifth shapeshifter it's not a huge power spike but I think losing two gold to maybe keep my win streak is worth it if you notice the enemy here though his board is very capped already he has two star warriors all over the board he has sugar craft stacked at 400 he has his armor pen I don't have magic pen here I think if I have magic pen, I win this easily. I don't believe this is even close. If I have a static shiv or uh, ionic spark. So that is definitely a priority. Getting the magic pen. Also, if I was level 8, I of course win this as well. 6 shapeshifter. I just go ahead and buy this charm because I think it's pretty good. The attack speed is really good on Cass. And on Syndra, it just means she can stack more. 
Oh, I finally fixed my positioning. So here, uh, Shivana jumps, right? And she kind of jumps across to the side. So I put her all the way on the left. So she'll jump into the enemy team, the front line. Elise is beside Nico on the left because she'll get healed by Nico ult. And then Swain also gets healed by Nico ult. And Swain is centered because he has a 2x radius on his AoE. And then, of course, like I said, Nas is right side alone because you want him to get popped. You want his trench coat to pop as soon as possible so the Nas's clones can all ult as soon as possible. And if you'll notice, the martyr healing is doing a lot. It is doing really well, right? So much healing on the, the front line. So it is unfortunate I lost the last fight. Otherwise, I think I would have made 40. Because I would have been at 30 gold and then I had a, a 6... No. I had an I would have had an eleven win streak, right? Yeah. Eleven win streak. So I would have made I believe I would have been at forty one gold from that last round. Or at that last round. I'm finally scouting again. I'm checking people's gold. If you'll notice, they have zero gold, right? Zero gold. I'm just looking to write ten gold. I'm trying to see if there's anything I need to worry about and also where I should position. So here, left side is better. Left side is better, left side is better, left side is worse. Uh, so there's basically three out of four chance the left side is a better position for my backline. And I was correct, because I don't want to hit this Tarek, right? Tarek eats projectiles, and he's also just holding adaptive helm crown guard, so he's very tanky. I'd rather hit this one star with no items, and then hit this one star uh, that has the items, like redemption and such. Get these squishy frontline out of the way quicker. So I do lose this, but if you'll notice, well you can't tell, but I'm not worried because this person is level 9, 0 gold. So they pretty much reached their cap. They can hit Recon too. Aside from that, there's not much else, I think. Hero, I was actually looking at the Pyro emblem. I don't think it's actually good. It does give my whole team attack speed, and it's sort of like a Rage Blade, but um... They took the static shiv already, so I can't get magic pen. And then here, Runans is useless, of course, and I think Archangels is not good enough on my Cassiopeia. So I go ahead and go for the Bramble Vest, because I think that having another tank item with my six, ship six shapeshifters is just really strong. At least it's much better than Archangels, in my opinion. And I go ahead and put this on Swain, I believe. Yeah, and then I level because I want to get my final item. Looking for Rage Blade, right? Bow plus Rod. I don't get it. I look at the items. I think Red Buff immediately. That's why I was hovering Bow. Uh, Last Whisper is useless. Rune is useless. Giant Slayer is what I was thinking maybe. But I thought, uh, no, I don't think so. I think Anti-Heal is too important. Also, I didn't buy this. Uh... I didn't buy this charm, not because it's not good, but because I was tired. I didn't even think about it, so I was a bit slow there. Also, I will say, I believe red buff being on Syndra would be much better, and then Nashris could potentially just be on Cassiopeia. Just because Syndra does a much better job at spreading the anti-heal. Also, I didn't buy the charm, but I also didn't get punished, so it kind of worked out. I should definitely be scouting. Also, I roll for a charm here. This is not good enough. A reforger remover, I don't think it's good enough. Earthquake is amazing. Despair. Also, I'm holding these Nasus. Mainly because I believe... I was thinking to myself, oh, maybe I can play a Nasus 2 at level 9. I'm never hitting Nasus 3. I have no gold. And then I think I can't get level 9 if I hold the Nasus, so I have to sell them regardless. Here I check positioning, and I notice that I should be right side with my my carries and as you can see I was correct I hit right side instead of hitting this recon on the left with gargoyles and warmogs I'm hitting his squishy units and I managed to get in his backline with the clones from trench coat which is actually a lot more common than you think when you have trench coat if you position well this might look close, but it really wasn't. My backline was full HP the entire fight. Gunblade healing is doing work. 
Here, I think I make a mistake again. I should be removing my Cassiopeia at this point. I think it's always incorrect not to. Uh, this is just another micro mistake because I was tired at the time. I should have removed Cassiopeia because every PvE round you get a free remover if you don't already have one. So there should be no items on Cassiopeia. And on top of that, if I remove her Cassiopeia, my DPS is lower, which means my Syndra gets a more chances to ult during the dragon, which gives her more stacks. Here I just buy this immediately, and I see two magic pen items, and I immediately take Spark, because I can put it on Swain. Static Shiv is also great, but uh, I would have to move an item off of one of my carries, which I'm not a fan of, since Shiv and Spark are basically both support items, right? So I'd rather just take Spark, put on Swain. He's centered, so he's kind of well protected from the enemy carries. He kind of gets attacked last, or at least after Nasus gets popped. In this case, after Nasus gets popped. Also, I reposition again after scouting, because I see the left side is weaker for my opponent than the right side. Or at least I believe that putting my carries on the left side gives me the high chance to win, especially since Rise cannot really hit my back line. I do have Gunblade, so that's not a concern for the most part. But if you have your carries in the same corner as the Rise, like or opposite of the Rise, then he can hit them when he ults. Also, I'm, I was scouting to see what units my opponents need. So I see this one, he looks like he wants to go for Hecarim, Tom Kench. Uh, and, well, he's my only opponent this round. I did scout last round as well, but... Also, I immediately play Briar over Jace, of course. I get Eldritch, and she's also just much stronger. So now I'm just rolling for Tom Kench, Hecarim, and my own unit, which is Briar. And that's it. Game is pretty much done at this point, and I decide to feed, which could technically be a mistake, but um, I think the difference between feeding and not feeding is probably one loss and I believe that feeding gives me a slightly better chance to win than the health. I actually lose this fight which is a bit weird to me but I just need good charms basically at this point. Oh and then I also completely had forgotten, I'll be honest, I completely forgotten I had this uh, portal radiant blessing. Which is weird because I'm the one who stepped on it. But like I said, I was really tired. So the second I get my blessing, I realize, wait, wait a second. I lost like seven fights throughout the game and won almost uh, 15 or something. I, I forgot exactly how many, right? Overall. And yet I was still winning so much, right? Without my Radiant Blessing. So the second I get this, I know that this is no longer close. I am just going to win. And I do continue feeding Briar because I'm going to get an item off Carousel. And I just gave her Bloodthirster. And Briar's stun and damage is actually very high, even as a 1 cost. So I just think to myself, you know, feeding Briar gives me the highest possible like amount of strength, which I want before we get to the next PvE round. Here I'm making sure he doesn't need this emblem, this Witchcraft emblem, for any reason. He doesn't, so... I know he doesn't, so I don't care what he takes. And I'm just thinking, what's a good Briar item? Uh, in hindsight, I think maybe double Bloodthirster or even Evan Shroud was better. But I did take that Blade just for damage. Because I don't think I was having issues with, uh, you know, my frontline not being tanky enough. I think I just want to kill his units faster. And here's Silver Mirror Dawn. I also think Prowler's Claw is pretty good. But I really like Silver Mirror Dawn because Briar ults one time. If she hits a big clump, it does a lot of extra damage from that AD that it get that you get from Silver Mirror Dawn. So I basically just gave my Briar an extra 200 and what 20% AD, and she also got 50 armor, 50 uh, MR, and 8% bonus damage. Plus I'm feeding her, so she's getting more health and more damage from that as well. So she just got way stronger, right? Even though she's one star. And here again, it looks a little close, right? But he didn't even get through my front line completely before losing. 
And now I just need a good charm to win out. And I get triple thieves gloves. It is a bit uh, sad because if I had a unit on bench, I could check the thieves gloves before placing them, which is what I wanted to do, but I was too poor. Here I think to myself, oh, that looks pretty good for Shivana. I'm just going to use my remover, uh, put it on Shivana here, you know. And it kind of works out. I actually wish Elise and he FF'd. <laughs> okay, I mean, that, that's all. GG. And also, if anyone has any questions about this game or the gameplay, uh, please leave a comment and let me know. And uh, if you liked the video, please leave a like. Thank you.